Hello everyone, my name is Alam, I'm from Sober Lab, and today we'll continue my videos about Home Assistant. This day I will show how to connect uh, Google Mini or Google Assistant to your Home Assistant. What's the idea for this video? You have two options. The first one, you can go direct in the cloud option where you pay a fee for Home Assistant and that you can connect or you can go in the manual option. In this video, I will show the manual option that it's the free option and if you are using a local Home Assistant. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show it. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and let's see how to do it. Okay, before someone asks, no, it's not a permanent set, okay? This one's my temporary set, it's a small office that I have in my house. And uh, because my living room, that it's a big space, I'm currently being used for other things. So as soon as everything be back in normality, I will be back for my office. And uh, don't worry. It's really temporary. If you look behind what I did, it's really crazy. I put blankets and everything in all over the place because it's a small room and it's uh, wood and it's the acoustic it's really bad they make a lot of echo at least i try to manage a little bit sorry about it if you think that's too echo but anyway let's go back the application that we're going to install it's uh, google system if we come here in the home assistant web page in the part of integration they have two options the first one it's automatic setup in a home assistant cloud if you pay the cloud don't need to do this step but i don't like to have all my google system in the cloud I want to have a local. Having this one in local, I cannot do the cloud option. So I needed to have a manual setup. And they have here all the steps that you can do. Don't worry, I will go through these steps and it will be quite easy. But first thing that you need to have is external access with your host name and SSL certification. Okay, what it means? You need to have this Home Assist link for an external website. You can be anyone. And uh, you can have two options as well. You can have uh, for the port forwarding or you can have directly for, for, for free as long as this one have uh, SSL. What it means, you can get a DocDNS page and that you can put all the ports after or you can have one website for each application. In my case, I prefer it because I don't allow different ports to be accessed. Only one port I open, the port for, for free and uh, port 8. Before we start installation, we go for the basic things that we already did. Here it's our home assistant. The last time that we set up and we stopped in this stage was install the supervision. In the supervision, we install the DocDNS, the Mariana database, and uh, the proxy manager to manage your external access. As well, we install the Mosquito for integration and the Visual Studio for configure our configuration. But in my case, I have more than one device connected for the same network and each device is connected external for my network. As my holder only allowed one port to be forward for the port for, for free and port 80, so I have only one device that manage all my proxy manager and the other device uh, link for this device. In this case, when I try to configure my home assistant, first time that I set it, I have the request as a bad request for 00. Uh, as a standard, they don't allow any trust proxy. What we need to do, we need to come here in Visual Studio and set a small line as a HTTP. The line that we're gonna set is this one. HTTP, I will be IP ban enable. It means that if someone try to make multiple logins, they will block. Why it's good? Because I don't want that no one access my server for brute force. What I put after three times that they try to access it, they will block and not work. Okay, that is great. And that I use for, for true. And the trust proxy, I leave the IP for my other server. That is 192.168.1.253. So this one's the trusted pro proxy in my case. Have this set up. I will come here in configuration and come here in a server control and I check if the configuration is correct. If they appear the information configuration valid, I can come here and restart my home assistant. This one, then they will apply all the modification. And then as soon as the home assistant restart, I will be able to access from my external website. If I try to enter again in my website, they will now come from home assistant. I do my login and now I have external access for my home assistant. 
If you don't have access for your home assistant outside from your house or external access, this Google Assistant will not connect you to the home assistant. So this is the first step that you need to have. It's really important. Okay, presume that you have and everything is working, then we can go for the next step. What's the next step? First thing, we're gonna open this uh, console action Google. This console action Google, don't worry, we'll leave in the link in the description. We can come here and set up a new project. This new project that we're gonna set up, it's Home Assistant. You can put any name. I put Home Assistant because I'm using for Home Assistant, only to be easy for me. So I come here the place, I put UK and English I want, so I can start the project. Once that they come here, you have a lots of different customers and different information that you can do. In this case, we're gonna link to Home Assistant, so we need to come here and use as a smart home. They will take some minutes until they create this first template of project. Once that it's created, they will load for a different page. The URL that we're gonna use is the website that we already defined. If you have uh, uh, only one URL and have different ports that it's from this URL, you're gonna need it to put two dots, eight to one, two three. But in my case, I don't have this one, so I can leave only my port for for free. After this one, you're gonna need to put API and that's Google Assistant. Have this one set up, you can come here and put save. After you save this page, we come here in uh, account linking and that uh, we're gonna link our account. The first client that we're gonna use will be this one, HTTP Outraction Google User Content dot com slash R slash and that's the name of the project that you're using. The name of the project will be this one. Exactly after the project will be the name. If you put Home Assistant, it will appear as a Home Assistant. If you put, I don't know, Google Assistant, it will appear Google Assistant and the ID. So we can copy here and paste. After this one, you can set a password. It can be any password that you want. This one will not be used for anything else. So don't worry to put a really strong password and remember this one. Don't worry about it. Now we're gonna go to authorization. For the authorization, we're gonna add our website for the Home Assistant author slash authorization and then for the token will be exactly the same process we're gonna copy here slash token have this one in mind then we come here in the configuration and that we needed to add two scopes the first one will be email and the second one will be name have this one we're gonna put as a next and now we finish all the action that we need to do in the action console. Next step, we need to come here in the Google Cloud Platform. Here in the Google Cloud Platform, if you come here and select a new project, in this case was the project for the Arc clone. If you guys see my previous video, you're gonna remember about this project. But anyway, we come here and we click in all. In all, it's already appeared my home assistant project. And this part of Home Assistant have exactly the same ID as the one that we just created. So we can open this project and put open. Once that we open this one, we need to set up our keys. So we come here and click in these three arrows, if it didn't appear right at this page. And we come here in IPN service and create a new credential. Here in the part of credential, they already showed the credential for mail, but we're gonna create a new one. The type of credential that we're gonna create will be the service account. In the service account, we're gonna define the name. So, home assistant, and that can be the same description, don't need to worry about it. And we click create and continue. Here, the rules that we're gonna define will be service account. We come here and look for service account. Here in the service account, we come here in the service account token creator. Now we can continue. And they ask, you want to create any kind of uh, provider or account for it? No, we only click done. Once that is complete, we already have our new uh, service create. So we can open the service to create our key. Here in the service create, it's everything, it's active and current working. So we can come here and go in key. In the key, we need to create our key. To create it, we can click in add a key and create a new key. Once that the key is created, we come here in Jensen and we create this key for this template. 
Once that, once that is created, they already offer you to save automatically, so we're gonna save. Next thing that we need to do, we need to come here in search and search for Home Graph API. Here we need to enable the services, so my API it's already enabled. Have this one enabled, now we can go back for the Home Assistant and start to set up our configuration. Here in the Home Assistant, the first thing that we need to go is the Visual Studio Code, and we need to add some extra lines. The extra lines that we're gonna need to add it's a Google Assistant, the project ID will be exactly the same that we read uh, defined before. We can come here in development and copy this project ID, come here and paste. Then we need to include a service account, Jenson, that will be exactly the same key that you saved before. Don't worry, we'll show you it in a second. And that we're gonna put as report state as true. Have this one set up, we can come here and create this service account. To create it, we only copy this name, new file, and we pass the same name, and now we are in this Jenson account. Here in the service account, we're gonna open our key that we save and open as a Notepad++. Here in the Notepad++, we can copy all this description and we will be back in our Home Assistant and paste this service. Only let's remove these two dots and now it's here, should be everything done. Now we paste the service and now they have access for the key. So we can close it, we can close it and come here in the configuration, service controls, and we check if all the configuration that we did is valid. Yes, wonderful, now all the configuration is valid, we can restart our home system. They will take some minutes until restart and then we finish the step in the home assistant, we can jump after in our phone to start to do the configuration in our phone. Once that the home assistant has started, we can come in our phone and open our Google Home. Here we can come already right, get start. If you already set up a home, it's fine. And that we come here, work with Google. Here work with Google, they will appear my application test. Because I already did some tests before, it means that I already appeared the names previously, but in your case, if you set up only once, it will not appear the second time. So we can select this test, my test application, or the name that you set up. We can open this one, and in this way, they already directly direct to your Home Assistant web page. So we can make the login here, Next. Now your Google Home is connected to your home assistant. So in this way, all your device will show it, will show your TV and your link device at your home that it's set up. In my case, I have a, a Synology NAS, so they already appear my Synology NAS information, my Plex account that I set up, and everything is connected to your home assistant. So in this way, you can only ask some information for your Google Assistant and that they will connect directly for your device for the home assistant. So guys, I hope that you like this video. In this way, you can connect your home assistant to your Google Assistant in local network. If you want, then you can ask for Google to make some scripts or run some application that you already define your home assistant. If you like this video and you didn't leave the like in the start of the video, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel, and see you next time. Bye.